So we all know that there's a big game coming up this Sunday, the Cleveland Browns versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have heard me yammer on on and on about this game, so I thought I'd bring somebody else to talk about this game. Who's that going to be? Well, let's talk about that. Real quick, guys, before this video starts, I want to make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a ton of videos coming out during this football season. If you want to make sure you don't miss something, lock it in here so you don't miss a single video during this season. So as I said in the intro, big game here, and I have to bring in an outside perspective. I know, I know, you guys are going to get mad at him because he's a Steeler fan, but he's somebody I work with a ton on AFC North Talk. You guys know who it is. Tony, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great. It's a great matchup. 4-0 Steelers against 4-1 Browns. I'm, I'm excited for this game on Sunday. Excited to talk to you about it. It's definitely a fun matchup. It's definitely an interesting matchup. It's kind of weird that it's happening so early in the season and I know must win is kind of a hard adjective to use this early in the season but my question is for Pittsburgh is this kind of a must win game because you have this home game on this three game stretch here where you play the Browns the bank the not the Bengals I'm sorry uh the Ravens and then you play the Tennessee Titans both road games is this a game here just even if it wasn't the Browns but especially since it is the Browns and the Browns are a good team, is this kind of a must-win game for Pittsburgh here? I don't see it as a must-win because I think, you know, coming into the season, I don't see that – think that Steeler fans really thought this was going to be a, a fast start to the year. I thought, you know, with the way that this offseason went – now, boy, how, how wrong were we about how this offseason and the no practice and stuff were going to play a role in the beginning portion of the season? It has not at all. But regardless, right, I think a lot of people expected this team to come out, start slow, and then kind of find themselves – the middle of the year we've seen that from Steeler teams in the past last year Steeler team started 0 and three and then they worked their way back into an eight and eight finish so the fact that this team is four and oh right now you know they haven't played anybody and they have had an easy schedule and that's certainly played a, a role in why they're four and oh to this point but I don't think there's must wins at this point right it's, it's still early days even let's say this team does go one and two in their next three uh you know that's still a five and two football team that's, that's where you want to be mid-season anyway so I don't see this as must win I think but I do think it's a it's a big matchup against the Browns and what the Steelers don't want is to break the streak, right? The Steelers have won so often in in Heinz Field. Don't want to don't want to give that up now. Definitely, definitely. Um, so you kind of touched on it a little bit, but we kind of have an idea what this game means for the players because it's more about the immediate implications of it. Um, it's still an early regular season game. Yes, it's going to be important. Yes, it's a rivalry game, but there's going to be a limit on how much it's important. But we all know the consequences and kind of the stakes this holds for the fans, especially on the Cleveland side of things where they've seen every good team ever that they've had walk into Heinz Field and just be ruined after that. For Steelers fans, I'm interested to know what does this game mean? What's the energy like? Like, how are you guys handling this kind of big matchup between these two teams this early in the season? I think for Steeler fans, and I can only speak for myself here, but in talking to some other ones, I think there's just real excitement about this game. I think I think there's an excitement about the idea that Steelers-Browns is a real rivalry again. I mean, you know, we had all the, the craziness last year, the Miles Garrett incident and whatnot, but this is going to hopefully be much less about that than just about two really good football teams you know, facing in midseason here or in the early parts of the season. And that's what I think is the most exciting part of this game. You know, it's a big game. It's a big game for the Browns, but it's a big game for the Steelers. They don't want to lose a division game. They certainly don't want to lose a home division game. Uh, and the Cleveland Browns have been a longtime rivalry. It's, it's, it, they're finally back on the Steelers' level. I think that's what makes it so exciting for Steelers fans. So I think, I think there's genuine excitement right now in Pittsburgh about this game. <laughs> you sound like a lot of Ohio State fans when we talk about how we want Michigan to be good so the rivalry yeah, yeah. can come back. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> First, let's talk about Pittsburgh, what they've done well. I think my takeaway, because I've watched these games, too, uh, for the AFC North Talk channel, make sure you subscribe to that, um, is that my takeaway from Pittsburgh through four games has been, man, the defense at times can be that defense, right? When they need to close, like, it looks like they can become that defense at the times they need it. But it's, it's kind of been inconsistent there. But what's been consistent, in my opinion, and I don't care what the advanced metrics say or the QBRs say, Big Ben has been playing at – and I'm surprised by this. I did a whole video about how I didn't think Big Ben would be good. But Big Ben's been playing at 
a better than 2018 level so far. I mean, 10 touchdowns, one interception. The big thing with Big Ben was interceptions, especially coming off injury. You thought the interceptions were going to be what held this team back or could hold this team back. And he's come out here and he's played the best he has since I think like 2013 almost. Like it's 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 almost amazing in that sense. So just talk about Big Ben real quick and how good he's been, what that's meant to the Steelers team. It's been amazing to watch because, like you said, you know the, the expectation for Ben Roethlisberger coming into this year, he always starts slow. I mean, we've seen that from him. We talked about 2018 and how I mean, that was his slowest start. He was awful in those first couple games before he got hurt. Um, actually, that was last year. 2018, you know, he started slow in that, in that year as well. I mean, they had the, the bad game against uh, the Browns. They had the tie, and he had a bunch of turnovers in that game. He just hasn't started fast, and it takes him a while, especially to get on the same page with some of his younger receivers. And so when you look at this receiving core – and a receiving core that he's only played with one guy. And he, he had only played with Juju. And he's got to get on the same page with James Washington. I think he had like four or five catches the one year he played with Ben. Uh, Deontay Johnson, right? And you get the rookie, Chase Claypool, coming in. Now, I think there was an expectation that it's going to take Ben a little time to get reacclimated with with the NFL, right? The speed of the NFL coming off that elbow surgery. Get acclimated to playing with that elbow now and how it feels after elbow surgery. Um, and, and none of that's been the case. He's come out and not say it's been all systems go all the time. I mean, there have been times this, this year where this offense has struggled and Ben has struggled through a bad interception against Denver. But on the whole, you're absolutely right. This is the fastest start to a season Ben's ever had. Ben Roethlisberger right now, and I know the on pace stats are stupid, but Ben Roethlisberger is on pace for 40 touchdowns and four interceptions, right? That's where he is right now. It's an insane. He's not, he's not going to, he's not going to finish with 40 touchdowns and four interceptions. Um, but you know, he's doing a great job right now of diagnosing before the play, understanding what the defense is in and how to manipulate them to get the look that he wants. Uh, this is a quick strike offense. I mean, he's getting rid of the ball very quickly. Second lowest time to throw in the national football league. And that's helping him, you know, stay upright, not get hit, protect that elbow, but also get these young receivers in some catch and run situations. You saw that last week with Chase Claypool, how successful that can be. Yeah, and speaking of Chase Claypool, I think it's interesting the young wide receivers that the Steelers have. Now, Deontay Johnson won't play, but I also think Deontay Johnson is going to be a big part into the Steelers team's future offensively. Um, so, like, how, how have those young wide receivers been? We know Chase Claypool had that breakout performance last week. Do you see him as somebody who's going to eventually usurp Juju for that number one wide receiving role so you can have Juju in that two role where I think he's more natural? Or is this just going to be kind of Deontay Johnson's Thing and waiting and then you'll use chase claypool kind of like a martavius bryant uh it's a good question i'm not you know it's we're so early days with chase claypool now remember you know you go back to that draft uh, show that we did on afc north talk i wasn't high on chase claypool i think i gave the steelers like a b minus for the pick and that's mostly because you know i was like hey you know trust the steelers when it comes to wide receiver they just know their stuff but i really don't like this pick so i'll try to be nice with a b minus um, mm -hmm. he's been an eight, he's been an A plus guy through four weeks. I mean, you know, this is a guy who had a big catch in that giants game on opening day, one catch, but it was along the sideline and he got, you know, did a great job of getting two feet down. He's had some other nice catch. He had a long touchdown earlier this year as well. And then of course he had the breakout against Philly. What is his role going to be long-term is an interesting question because, you know, Deontay Johnson, when he gets healthy again, he will be the X and you'll still probably play Juju in the slot. So do they try to work in more four wide receiver sets where they can put Claypool on the field or does, does Claypool start to take away some reps? from a guy like James Washington. There's just a lot of mouths to feed at wide receiver right now. And I think what, what Ben's done a good job is he's done a good job of uh, spreading the load around. He's, he's done a good job uh, of spreading the football and getting everyone involved. So with Claypool, what I'm hoping for is that if, if defenses have to start respecting him, they have to start ro rolling a safety to that side because they don't want to get beat on the deep ball that we know. I mean, Claypool's got great speed, 4-4 speed for his size. Then maybe you start to open up some Juju stuff underneath. Juju hasn't exactly had a, a fantastic start to the year numbers wise, but a lot of that's because, you know, they're using them as decoys on some plays. We're understanding where that coverage is rolling to and going to more open receivers. Like I said, this is a catch and run offense losing Deontay is tough in this game because I thought this is a game where Deontay Johnson could have a big game. Um, but I think the overall, I think you have to be pleased with where the Steelers are at wide receiver right now because everyone is playing up to their level. Yeah, I completely forgot about James Washington and I don't think James Washington is necessarily a terrible wide receiver, but we're talking about the offense here, and I think what is that offensive game plan going to be for 
Pittsburgh versus this team. I think a lot of Browns fans are coming into it assuming that Big Ben's just going to try to throw the ball as many times as possible towards Andrew Sedejo, um, the Browns' very leaky safety. And the Browns are starting um, a backup at strong safety in Sheldrick Redwine, although the safety play's been so horrendous, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make that a safe a backup safety is there. Um, it's just not that much of a replacement level there. But what's the game plan for Pittsburgh? Are fans right in thinking and assuming that that's what they're going to do? Are they just going to try to do a Ben does what Ben does game? Or are they going to come out here and try to surprise the Browns a little bit? I, I You know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm as intrigued as you are about what the offensive game plan is going to be for the Steelers because they have been early an early down rushing team this year. I think they're, they're a little, uh, little below league average when it comes to passing on, on early down. So they're kind of leaning on the run early on and you know they're not a great rushing team right now i mean james connor's put up a couple i mean i think they've had like three out of their four games 100 yard rusher but a lot of that is like big runs that that hide what is otherwise you know a pretty poor performance in the rushing game so i don't know that we're gonna see i i, I hope i should say i hope we don't see like the Steelers come out in this game and try to go run run pass early and try to establish a run because as we know the browns offensively are, are, are a very fast starting team and so this team could very easily get down early if they try that. I think where the Steelers can have success in this game is over the middle of the field. If you're going, you know, again, if, if Sandejo and, and, De- and Denzel Ward's going to have to, to uh, play on Chase Claypool's side because they respect his speed and they respect what he can do from a big play perspective, they want to kind of limit his role. Well, then that's going to open things up over the middle of the field. You're going to see Eric Ebron. You're going to see Vance McDonald and you're going to see Juju Smith Schuster uh, have a big game in this one. And I think that's where the Steelers should try to attack. That's where Ben Roethlisberger has had the most success. I think he's almost 400 yards in the middle of the field. This year, two of his touchdowns, 80% completion percentage in the middle of the field. That's where I think the Steelers can do some work here. And that's where, that's if I'm Randy Fickner, that's where I'm trying to attack. Now, does that concern you on some element? Because we know that this year it hasn't been true, but historically, most of Big Ben's interceptions have come in the middle field. Now, to be fair, a lot of quarterbacks have a lot of interceptions. It's just a tough place to operate there. But with a Browns team that, while they have not been a good coverage team, they have been a good turnover team, does that concern you having been thrown an area where historically he's been more susceptible to turnovers than any other area of the field? Absolutely. I mean, turnovers, are, I think, are going to be the story of this game overall. I think, the, I think the winner of the turnover battle in this game will win the game outright because these are two pretty evenly matched teams. So, uh, you know, Ben Roethlisberger taking care of the football is going to be as big a story on the Steelers side as, you know, Baker Mayfield taking care of the football is going to be the story on the Brown side as well. And it's not just, you know, throwing the football. It's also protecting him from Miles Garrett, who's had a great game, uh, who's had great games against Ben. Also, Denzel Ward had a great interception a couple years back against Ben. I still have nightmares about that one. So I would like for Ben Roethlisberger, maybe try to avoid Denzel Ward at some cost here because Ward can make some great plays on the ball as Ben has seen. And Ben, you know, at times has gotten careless, right? He throws late. When we talk about these kind of interceptions over the middle, right? Usually it's kind of late throws, uh, Ben holding on to the ball too long and not wanting to, to throw the ball away. Hopefully he doesn't get into that. He hasn't done that this year. And then, like I said, he's getting rid of the ball pretty quickly. And that's what I like. If it's quick strikes over the middle, I'm comfortable. If he's holding on to the ball too long and trying to force something in, that's when you see his mistakes happen. Definitely, definitely. And with Denzel Ward, I'm still wondering why teams, knowing the weaknesses on the Browns secondary, still actively, voluntarily choose to throw at him. He's the one good coverage player that the Browns have. Um, But speaking of the Browns defense, we're going to talk about the Steelers defense. Playing a really good offense this week. I think we can all say that confidently after last week's game against Indy. This is a good offense that the Steelers are playing. Probably the best one you guys have played all season. Defensively, what's the game plan there? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because this is a game where the, you, know, you have to take out the rushing attack from the Browns first, right? That is the Browns' bread and butter. You have to take that away. But in taking that away, and we saw this a little bit in that game against the Giants on opening day, you know, when you commit so heavily uh, to the rushing attack, you're going to be a little leaky in the secondary. And this has been a Steelers team that's been leaky in the secondary in pretty much every game at times, right? We saw Daniel Jones have some success, an 18-play drive that they had in that game. Um, and he also had a, a deep throw to Slayton for a touchdown, you know, we saw in, in that Broncos game, Jeff Driscoll had some success throwing the football. Uh, the, you know, Deshaun Watson had some success in the first half of that game uh, against the Texans. And then, of course, this week, Carson Wentz on fire to Travis Fulgham, 10 straight third down conversions in that game for the Philadelphia Eagles. So you want to take away the run. And the way you want to do that, in my eyes, is you want to stay in a base defense, uh, keep Tyson Alualo, the nose tackle for the Steelers, on the field. The Steelers are averaging getting up just one yard per carry when Alualo is on the field. Um, and so you want to do that, but in, in doing so, right, that means you're probably going to take Mike Hilton off the field. You're going to be trusting either uh, Terrell Edmonds or a linebacker to cover the Browns third receiver. And that's going to open up some things in the secondary 
Uh, and, and so, you know, you worry in this game for me defensively about the play action, about the misdirection, right? I mean, yes, I think the Steelers will have some success slowing down this Browns offense. This is going to be the best Browns rushing or the, the, uh, the best offensive line the Steelers defense has faced, no doubt about it. And the best rushing attack this team has faced all year, no doubt about it. But I do think when you look at the front seven for the Steelers, talent wise, they have it. I mean, I don't think this, you, you can't doubt the talent that they have. You're talking about Cam Hayward and, and Stephon Tewitt and Bud Dupree uh, and, and TJ Watt. Uh, the, the questions are all going to be about what happens on those play action plays. What, ha- like what, what happened last week against Carson Wentz. So we're going to see that again this week with a leaky secondary that allows Baker Mayfield to hit some big shots down the field. Remember, Last year in this game, Baker hit a big shot down the field. It was, it was OBJ down the sideline one-on-one against Steven Nelson. And you can see more of that this week with, with how poor the, the secondary has played in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see here. That's going to wrap up part one of this interview. If you want to make sure you see part two, which is going to drop Sunday morning before the game, make sure you subscribe, make sure you're notified. And if you just want to get more of Tony, you can get him at – Locked on Steelers, he does a daily drop there every Tuesday on Locked on Steelers, so make sure you check him out there. Also, AFC North Talk, subscribe to the channel, ding that notification bell there. We do reactions and reviews of each week's games on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Me and Tony had a head-to-head battle the other day, so make sure you check all that out. Make sure you subscribe there, and make sure you're locked in here so you can see part two when it uploads Sunday morning. 